Welcome to the 17th edition of the Panama Interview Series, where we discuss topics regarding foreign direct investment in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, we're streaming live from the capital city of the Republic of Panama. Uh, the Panama Interview Series is produced by Beco Legal and Compliance Consulting, LLC, a Miami domiciled limited liability corporation with offices in downtown Miami and Panama City, Panama. We provide uh, international commercial and transactional legal and regulatory compliance advice and related services to manufacturers and brand owners that seek to boost profit and hedge domestic risk through international distribution in the USA and in Latin America and the Caribbean. My name is Anthony Robinson, and I am the managing member of Beco Legal and Compliance Consulting. In the next several editions of the Panama Interview Series, we will discuss the future of probiotics in Latin America and the Caribbean and the potential of the probiotics market to contribute to the post-COVID economic recovery of the region. Digestive health and probiotics is one of the most dynamic sectors in the global health and wellness market. And Latin America is poised to be one of the fastest growing regions in the world for the consumption of probiotic and digestive health products. Given that the economies of Latin America and the Caribbean are forecasted to decelerate in 2023 with an estimated growth rate of just 1.3%, according to the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, it is imperative that we identify and support economic sectors such as digestive health and probiotics that have demonstrated growth potential. Today, we focus on Brazil, which is the largest and fastest growing market for digestive health and probiotic products in Latin America. To that end, we are honored to have as our guest, Fernando Arujo, product manager for probiotics and symbiotics with Synergies Agro Negocios Limited and Ronaldo Chieser, CEO of Performance Science Nutrition SA. Synergies is a biotechnology research company that develops innovations and services for animal health and nutrition that bring profitability to the production of Latin American agribusiness with sustainability and respect for nature. Synergies is headquartered in Sao Paulo. Performance Science Nutrition is a leading vertically integrated manufacturer and brand owner of dietary supplements, minerals, and vitamins in Brazil. Founded in 1987, Performance Science Nutrition is also headquartered in Sao Paulo. Together, Fernando and Ronaldo can speak to the entire spectrum of topics that impact animal and human end users of probiotic and digestive health products in Brazil. We have several topics to cover in 60 minutes, so certainly please keep your questions to the end. Uh, I will submit them to the speakers afterwards. Please note that today's discussion uh, will last just 40 minutes with introductions and salutations. The 40 minutes will be divided among the two guests. Accordingly, the time will be limited and will not be able to cover all the topics that we would hope to. Rather, we selected topics that we believe are timely and of interest to our followers. With all of that, I'd like to say, Fernando, Ronaldo, welcome. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. It's a pleasure to participate with you and also with Ronaldo on the Panama interview series. Uh, let's talk about probiotic. <laughs> okay. And Ronaldo, how are you doing? Where, where, where are you calling from today? You're on, uh, you're, you're on mute. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, how are you, uh, Fernando? How are you, Tony? Anthony? Uh, actually, I'm on vacation now, and I just uh, stopped by to to have this conversation with you guys. All right. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Uh, before we jump into today's conversation, let's set some context for uh, the conversation, namely, uh, what is the current status of the performance of the probiotic sector in Latin America and the Caribbean? Uh, why will the, the digestive health and probiotic sector be a powerful driver of future productivity in Latin America? And why are we focusing on uh, Brazil? Um, the current performance of probiotics, uh, the sector of probiotics and digestive health in Latin America, 
Uh, globally, the probiotic sector uh, of the health and wellness industry achieved a value of $64 billion in 2022 at a CAGR or a compound annual growth rate of 7% from 2018. Uh, the growth markets include Latin America and Asia. Uh, the, the two of them are poised to be the fastest growing markets for probiotic and digestive health products uh, going forward. Uh, the Latin America uh, probiotics market is forecasted to reach uh, 7.73 billion uh, US dollars by 2026 with a CAGR of 6.74% um, or $5.58 billion uh, from 2021. Uh, the Latin American probiotic sector is bifurcated into the following subsectors. Food and beverage, uh, that's the fastest growing sector, uh, followed by dairy products, um, non-dairy drinks, which sector is expanding due, due to the growing consumer interest in low lactose and cholesterol offerings that do not require refrigeration, infant formula cereals, uh, dietary supplements, and we're going to show right here a, um, a little bit of uh, dietary supplements. This is uh, the growth rate, or it's actually the top line uh, revenues for the dietary supplement sector, subsector within uh, the probiotics market through 2027. So you can see it's forecasted to have a, uh, a steady growth. Uh, this chart shows you uh, the um, animal feed probiotic market between 2018 and 2023, which is also uh, scheduled to uh, be growing. Um, the uh, market is uh, bifurcated between Brazil and Mexico that together account for 70% of the regional growth in Latin America. Uh, you can see here, that the rest of the uh, region also is experiencing significant growth. Uh, Venezuela is becoming increasingly health conscious and uh, are, are increasingly interested in consuming functional foods and beverages. Uh, the probiotics market in Chile is anticipated to expand at a CAGR of 3.95% over the course of the forecasted period uh, from 300 million in 2020 uh, to a total market value of uh, you know 394 and a half million uh, by 2027. Uh, Argentina uh, is expected to see significant growth uh, over the period uh, to reach a value of seven and 785 million dollars in 2025. So we are looking at a region that is um, showing potential growth within this, the probiotic sector uh, over the next you know five to ten years. So the, uh, you know, the next logical question is, what's driving that growth? And Ronaldo, I'd like to ask, see if you can help me try to identify or tell me what you th think in your experience, uh, are the drivers for growth in the digestive health and probiotic sector in Latin America as a whole? Anthony, could you please uh, repeat the question? So it's, the... It's, it's arriving cut it for me. Okay. So we've, uh, you know, we've just established that there's growth throughout the region within the probiotic sector. Um, what I think would be, you know, the next logical question is what's driving that growth within Latin America? So in your experience, what are the drivers of, of, of growth in Latin America and the probiotic sector? One of which is an expanding middle class, right? So across the region, we're seeing uh, a growing middle class, which means more disposable income, which means, uh, you know, more productivity and more uh, demand for products that are premium products, which most probiotic pro pro products are premium. Uh, for example, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, these are just some examples. I'm interested in, you know, because you're 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 on the ground and, and experiencing it. But you know, unhealthy eating habits, habits, for example, are driving demand for digestive remedies. So, if you have indigestion or heartburn, um, you know, laxatives that treat those symptoms have always been popular within uh, the Latin American region. So, one would think that you know, digestive support remedies would be uh, would be 
an opportunity. So to the extent that probi probiotics are uh, providing remedies for digestive health issues, we, we see an opportunity. So that's what I mean by, by drivers. Um, Fernando, what do you think are some of the drivers, uh, you know, that are causing the growth within Latin America, the product sector? Yeah, actually, when we talk about human, it's always interesting to say because uh, the probiotics in human uh, are, are, are being uh, high studied and much, much and, and many, sorry, many studies on, on, on how healthy or uh, how a good bacteria can act on the human. So if you take a look uh, uh, on the, the science, uh, we have what, what we call psychobiotics, which is probiotic that human can, can, can take daily to reduce the stress, uh, to manipulate the gut microbiota that, that acts directly on, on, on the brain, on the health of the brain. Also, some, some good bacteria that can uh, uh, reduce depression, obesity, so... Uh, when we talk about human, I guess, and I'm not the expert on, 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 on human, but longevity, people want to live more, people want to get m less, less, uh, 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 less sick. So that's what, what, what people are, are looking for, probiotic and more science on the TV, you can see uh, uh, more products, uh, dairy products, for example, on probiotic, all with these health aspects. That's one of the points uh, that I that I I think it's interesting, and the consumption is growing. Right. Can I? These health can I? Can I yes. Yes. Please. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I was not uh, listening well. Uh, so, by my understanding. And uh, actually, actually, we've been uh, attending to many workshops in uh, in health nutrition, and from five years uh, up to now, uh, science has been uh, uh, coming out with the new researches about the relation uh, between gut and brain, and actually, this was the first the first uh, discover uh, there's a, a relation a connection actually all this uh, this chart that you are presenting here let's talk about this uh, why why it's growing the consumption of uh, 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 probiotics because probiotics is directly related with absorption of nutrients and actually it uh, they are what what gives you the the health in your gut and will absorb more uh, vitamins uh, minerals um, amino acids uh, they will treat better the substract that when you eat every everything that uh, that we eat uh, becomes a kind of uh, soap. This is the sub we call it substract. This substract goes with the enzymes to the in to your gut, and then you start your absorption. So if you do not have a healthy uh, 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 flora, uh, probiotic flora, this will affect all this uh, spectrum of um, pathologies, let's, let's call pathologies, but uh, I would say uh, symptoms like stress, overweight, uh, osteoporosis, it's directly related with the absorption of calcium um, and other vitamins, uh, mental decline uh, and other uh, other uh, pathologies here, symptoms. So uh, the studies are showing that if we uh, increase the health uh, of your gut uh, flora, uh, you're gonna have better uh, digestion. Uh, you you are going to stress less. So 
that's why I I believe the 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 consumption it's growing. So this this would be the driver, I would say the uh, better absorption for better function of your entire body. That's the the point. That's what uh, the 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 researchers are are showing us. Right. And, and, these, and these health concerns uh, correspond with what you're saying. I mean, if an individual consumer is experiencing, you know, intestinal, you know, irregularities or immune issues, that is, uh, that, that does so very well with what you just explained. You know, the fact that we're seeing this uh, combination of health concerns um, corresponds very well with, with, with the comment you just made. Um, we, go ahead. Can I? compliment um the consumption of alcohol you know drinks it's are increasing and are increasing with the the amongst the the young the young uh, people uh, the new the new drinkers you know they are drinking more than the old ones so this is a concern why because alcohol is not uh liquor right liquor uh, liquor it's not healthy for your your flora destroy actually your flora you know and this comes the other other um, diseases you know so this is another concern why uh, the industry is putting uh, prebiotics in every every um uh, uh, most of most of the the uh, lactus, how mm -hmm. how would you say lactus dairy dairy, dairy, dairy food, products dairy yeah. products. Thank you, Fernando. So dairy products, uh, they are um, adding uh, prebi pre prebiotics be um, probiotics because of that, and pre prebiotics as well, which is the food for the probiotics. You know the fibers, so. Actually, um, there is a science concern, studies uh, about everything. This is, is a, I would say that it's a, um, uh, there, there are many, it's an environment, actually. You know, it's what you food, it's what you eat. If you eat processed food, you know, this will make your probiotic work more. So we're going to stress your probiotics at your gut. So uh, this is why I think uh, the, the, the consumption the, of probiotics are increasing a lot, you know, because first, first of all, people has to concern about what they eat, you know. Thank you. Right. Right, right, right. And I, and I think that um, the reason why we have Fernando and, and Ronaldo together is because you know, probiotics is not just a human uh, issue and concept. You know, it's really important, the effect of probiotics on animals. So, Fernando, if you could just speak to, you know, what are the beneficial effects of probiotics in animals directly? And then, you know, the indirect benefit for humans when, you know, animals are, are healthier because of the probiotics. That's nice. I, I, I'm trying not, not to repeat what Ronaldo said because... What happens to the to the animal also happens to us. So <laughs> the benefits is like very linked. It's almost the same. If you if you took an animal production, of course we are we we, we want to to achieve also performance and also uh, to to reduce the use of of growth promoters, antibiotic growth promoters. And, and instead of that, use probiotics, prebiotics, good bacteria to fill the animal. And it's not going, only going to, to help the animal on digestion, but if you take, if you're thinking on immunology response, if you take, for example, a, a, a poultry, 78% uh, of immune defenses of an uh, of, uh, of animal, a bird like this, 78, uh, 78 to 80% uh, it's on the intestine, on the gut. So if you use this kind of products that promote health of the gut, of the gut 
the birds we, uh, will have a good immunolo immunological response to vaccines, to uh, virus, uh, environment viruses, and etc. And also, it will uh, it will be good or it will improve on the microbiology aspects of the poultry and ph physiology aspects of the poultry. But uh, many, 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 many studies that that I that I I see uh, show it's showing that when you feed probiotic, when you feed good bacteria to the bird, uh, the it will increase. Uh, the velous height of the gut uh, and also the weight showing that uh, the gut it's more developed to absorb absorb food uh, and then you have a response on the weight gain for example uh, and the, the whole status of the bird also uh, when we think when Ronaldo said uh, said about uh, a brain gut access, it's really true, and we also uh, we are seeing this on animal as well. If you uh, uh, give probiotic to to animals, you can see you can check uh, the uh, increase of serotonin on the on the animal. So serotonin, of course, is a hormone that it's saying that the, the bird is good, you know, the animal is good, it's a good health. It's, uh, uh, if you take about, uh, for example, if you, you, you get an example on a human, after, for example, an exercise, you know, you have a spread of serotonin because you are in a, in a good mood, in a good sense, you know. And also, if you, when, when not to, to be too long, <laughs> uh, if we are feeding animals, uh, with probiotic, we are not only thinking about, of course, the production and also the animal, but also in the human aspects. Uh, we are providing food safety, you know, so that is very good uh, for 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 uh, once uh, 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 a people, uh, someone who is going to consume. Uh, a chicken, a chicken fillet, or a, a, a meat, or a, a, a dairy food, uh, you have a safe, uh, a safer uh, uh, food for 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 the human. So, right, and there's definitely a, a sustainability um, benefit, right, as well, to animal health through through probiotics. I mean, this concept of one health and the inter interdependency between animal environment and human. Is a powerful one. Could you speak to that? Yeah, it's very. Ronaldo, you can go first. You can go first. Go, go ahead, Fernando, please. No, Continue. it's very. Uh, well. Uh, no, it's very linked on what we work and what we 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 uh, we say about it because we are not thinking only the animal or, or I mean produce good food or safe food, but also we are concerned about the, the environment. So when you are feeding animals with probiotic, you also are feeding the environment. You have many, many, many kinds of bacteria as bacillus, for example, that will uh, benefit uh, the environment status of, of the, uh, uh, not only the, the animal, but, but uh, on the, the the where they they are created they where they are raising and everything and it's all about you know producing good food healthy food for humans so everyone is linked everything is linked you know uh, if we are thinking about and talking about reducing chemicals and antibiotics as group promoter for for the for the the, the, the production uh, on the environment, you 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 may say the same things. We are reducing the the chemicals as well, and and we are providing, for example, for corn, uh, for soybean, uh, uh, just for example, you are replacing these kinds of products to 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 natural products as as bacteria. Okay. I, I would, I would, can I, I would uh, summarize uh, this three globes here uh, saying that as much 
as much natural, as much closer uh, we we been uh, from the food and animal as well, and chemicals. If you take out chemicals as much as possible, you know, uh, everything is related. Everything is re related with with our genetics. So once we are more natural, more close, natural food, uh, natural air, everything, our genetic uh, will respond better because we are going to identify better the food which is natural more much more natural so that's why this um this wave that we are uh living for the uh we've been living actually uh from the last uh let's say 15 years and it, this is uh, very strong when i go to the 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 trade shows in us the natural uh expo trade shows, uh, all the booths, you have natural foods, you have a natural this and that. So all these globes are related with the, uh, nature, you know, I would say. So as, as, as less chemicals, as much uh, uh, natural uh, food uh, for the animals as well, for the humans. So everything will be better, I think. It's the, you know, the, the thesis opinion. of One Health is about interdependency, right, between human animals and environment. But that concept of interdependency is also at the center of recent advances in probiotics, namely the interdependency between the gut and the brain. Both of you touched on uh, that topic a couple of minutes ago. You know, researchers have discovered that keeping a balanced gut microbiota through probiotic intake can support overall mental health not just digestive health, including the reduction of incidence of depression or anxiety in healthy individuals by supporting healthy communication between the gut and the brain. So I'm interested in the mechanics. How does that work, Ronaldo? What, is, what are the mechanisms biologically that allow uh, probiotics to facilitate uh, or support health along the, um, you know, the gut-brain axis? Well, I would say that uh, basically, uh, in a very simple language, uh, um, probiotics are directly uh, related with absorption. You know, once you absorb better the nutrients, you're gonna have a, you're gonna be healthier. The, the 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 that's in, in summary you know uh for example one important question how many times a year do you take anti anti antibiotics how many times a year do you take antibiotics so antibiotics it's it's really bad for the gut really bad for the probiotics so they they kill the probiotics actually you know so you have to replace uh probiotics when you take uh uh when you take it uh for for a certain period of time for example for 20 days uh a probiotic um uh, antibiotic you have to replace uh along with probiotics uh even considering that they reproduce faster they reproduce uh, uh super uh, super fast the the our 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 probiotics so but uh the relation between gut and and brain uh which has been discussed for the last uh, five years is something quite new um i would say that uh, you have a you have the kidneys you have the kidneys in the middle Okay, uh, kidneys uh, are related straight with the filtration, and if you do not have a, a healthy kidney, you're not gonna have a healthy brain as well. You know, you're gonna have a, you're gonna be confused. You, you're not gonna 
think uh, straight, you're not going to focus. So, uh, gut, gut is the, is the pathway for the nutrients reach the body. Body is going to be healthy, so consequently, brain will be healthy as well, you know? So, it's, uh, it, everything is linked, actually, you know? But, uh, but uh, there, of course, uh, there we have, um, how can I explain that? So we, we're gonna go deep in this subject. So I, I am not an expert let's, on this. Let's, but, uh, let's, let's try to let's try to maybe let the diagram help us a little bit. So the vagus nerve here, the the big arrow on top, is connecting the brain and the gut. What's that? You know, the connection between the brain and the gut is through that pathway. If I'm not mistaken, what role? What is passing through there? Are there? Is it? Uh, you know, is it the, um, you know, serotonin, dopamine, uh, you know, other hormones that, that are produced in the gut that are actually reaching the brain through the vagus nerve? Uh, so the hormones are not produced in, in the in the gut. Uh, uh, gut the gut function. Uh, everything starts at the gut. So that's why they are linking gut with brain because our start is by the gut you know absorption of uh, of nutrients that will uh work better the brain and actually will generate other hormones you know so without without a, a, a healthy gut you're not gonna feel the results of the, the the hormones produced by the brain, by the the other gland, uh, pituitary glands, and, and and so on and so forth. So, so, we got, so we got neurotransmitters in the gut, right? So we, for example, yes, serotonin. we have a neuro, we have right. neurotransmitters from from the brain to every every organ in in the in the body. Actually, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, a, for you have an idea, we have a, uh, one, uh, we have one, one, um, I don't know how to say in English, neuronio. Right. Uh, neuron, neuron. Neuron? Is it, Anthony? Yes. Neuron? Yes, we have 1.5 meter neuron linked to our, um, uh, Oh, Bishiga. How do you say Bishiga in English? I'm so sorry, people. So we yeah. have this. We have this neuron that controls bladder, bladder, bladder. bladder. Thank you, thank you. So we have one neuron that controls the blad the bladder, and you know, uh, and make you go to the to the to the toilet. So uh, you control that. So, uh, I see this this connection. What, what do you say, uh, Fernando, by your experience with the animals? Uh, yeah, it's very interesting to, to, to say and to understand that, for example, human has more than 100 trillion microorganisms, bacteria, you know, I always say, in a clean people. Uh, who takes shower every day? I mean, the point is, uh, we are we we are made from bacteria. So every yeah. study and everything it's make. Oh, so we, we and and now we, we have some like uh, 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 paradigmas, I would say, with antibiotic. And what is antibiotic? Antibiotic is against life. And also antibiotic kills the bacteria that we have in the gut. Yeah. And these di this biosis that the antibiotic cause uh -huh. will, will appear or will give, for example, uh, will create some super bacteria or something that it's, uh, it will be related with some, e some illness. For example, uh, autism. So... Uh, the the frequently use of antibiotic you can uh, it can promote 
like a grow or, or it can appear a kind, a species of bacteria that is related with people that autism, for example. So uh, the point is how we provide uh, uh, or, or uh, uh, we are providing bacteria or good bacteria to uh, work against the antibiotic, you know, to fill the gut with more good bacteria uh, to promote everything that we said, good digestion, good health and everything. So I think that's an interesting point, you know, interesting point, because bacteria, bacteria are some of them uh, the precursor for some, some hormones, as Ronald said. So uh, we have to, to have the gut in balance every day, every time, to collect the benefits of, this, uh, of, the, of the, the gut microbiota. And it happens also with the animal and also with the human. So sometimes when you eat, for example, a heavy food, it stays every uh, drink too much alcohol, for example, and go to walk on the 40, 45 degrees. What's going to mm -hmm. happen? You're going to have, for example, a, a diarrhea. And diarrhea, it's really the, the, the dysbiosis caused from, from, from uh, the whole aspect that I said, for example, uh, sun, too much sun, or, or a, a food that is very difficult to, to absorb. So the use of probiotic every day, I think it's, go, it's going uh, to help to heal and to balance the, the bacteria that we already have. Um, you know, related to that comment, Fernando, is some work that your company has done on um, a strategy used uh, in the pig chain with early weaning of piglets, right? So you've used uh, probiotics to help um, uh, treat piglets that are weaned early and therefore have some imbalance in their uh, bacteria in their gut. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's correct, and and that's the the, the most challenging period of of uh, 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 piglet uh, raising the, the the swine raising because uh, they are that is the time that the the health the, the health is not developed the oh my god I, I forgot the I mean the the immune system, immune system is not developed. So one of these strategies is we, we, we use uh, probiotics, a uh, high amount of probiotics in the first day, in the first period. But no, not only that, not only that. What we did as a, or what we do as a strategy is to treat or to, to feed the sons, the sons or the mothers with probiotic mm -hmm. and why is that because the mother's going to pass this good health and good balance from the piglets mm -hmm. so the pre piglets will suffer less uh, on on diarrhea for example uh, the use of antibiotics is going to be less and they are going to they are they are alive more have more with more weight you know more heavy and that's why the and that's because the first probiotic that the piglets consume it's when they bur they 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 burst at the moment that they are they are coming to the world you know they they are uh, they are eating uh, they are eating probiotic from 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 their mother you know from first of all from the the uh, the vagina I don't know how to say but uh, the vagina of the, the animal mm -hmm. that is the first probiotic the the, the amount of lacto uh, lab uh, lactobacillus lactobacillus bacteria uh, it's very high very high and also as a strategy, of course, we giving them probiotic through uh, the mouth 
and also the first fee. You know, this will help uh, they grow uh, grow faster, reduce the disease, and as well, one of the strategies is to pulverize it. You know, to throw probiotics on on, uh, on the area that they stays with their mother because because uh, they are uh, they are with in contact with feces as well but if this feces and uh, uh, it's full of probiotic they will consume as well probiotic the probiotic is going to be good on the cycle of of of, of uh, on the intestine on the gut and everything so so it's one of the strategies that used to promote health, promote uh, uh, better development of the animals as well, and as well to reduce antibiotic because the amount of antibiotics that they use on these first phases is high. So, so is this, is this a, a, a targeted probiotic regimen or is this kind of a, a broad spectrum, for lack of a better word, probiotic treatment? Are you giving them probiotics that are that are for a particular end objective that is probiotic from specific phases you know and specific uh, uh, moments of their life so for example if you want a probiotic to only with more focus on performance you know so we can blend up, uh, some kinds of probiotics related to that if you want a probiotic uh, you you can find some bacteria uh, that's more related, for example, to cut the the, the diarrhea. Uh, so you have different kinds of probiotics for different phases of production. It, but not it's not everyone that knows that. Sometimes you are you are putting uh, the probiotics all in the same basket, you know, and say probiotic is the same thing, and probiotic is not the same thing. Uh, the same thing. You have different, very, very uh, different kinds, uh, many, many, many kinds of bacteria, and and uh, so so that's that's how we we do. You know, the customization, the personalization of probiotic probiotic regimes is not a new concept, right? But it is something that I would think is I would say is more popular recently. Um, in consumer package probiotics uh, for human consumption, right? So the concept that I can um, uh, formulate a combination of strains that are going to be uh, for a particular targeted health outcome is, is something that is driving demand, right? Yeah, and for animal, I don't know if Ronaldo wants to say first that, that, that the human, Right. Well, we'll, we'll just go ahead and, and, and say, you know, the pig, the piglet regime is really not targeted or customized. It sounds like it's the opposite of targeting and customized. Is that is that right? Yeah, but uh, you mentioned a, a very nice thing here, and we talk, when you talk about poultry, uh, and we are delivering this is very new, and we are delivering this to the market because I, I I talk about you know in general you because you have more specific bacteria for performance in your diarrhea, but but the new claim, uh, let's put that way, or or the new concept, it's really to develop a probiotic uh, for the customer needs. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you take in, in mind uh, uh, to reduce a salmonella, which is a, a, a food safety problem, yeah, uh, we go to the customer, we collect uh, uh, the, the salmonella, we grow the salmonella, we cultivate this pathogen bacterium in, 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 in the lab, and we have, for example, we have a bank of probiotic, and we put this, uh, we put together the bacteria probiotic with the salmonella, for example, to check and to verify which one of them produces the more antibacterial sin, antibacterial sin, which is a natural antibiotic against uh, this specific bacteria. Uh -huh. And then, for example, if you take 10 uh, probiotics, you have three or four that produces more substrate to inhibit the salmonella. So what we do, we, we go back to our plant 
and we grow these three specifically strains of bacteria, bacteria that works on the salmonella. And we produce a new probiotic for them. Mm -hmm. That's really true. That's totally new. That's, that, that is totally new, you know, it's a, 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 a very different way to see the probiotic market. And for me, it's the future of probiotic. It's not one bacteria through everything. It's not one bacteria to health, uh, to performance, uh, to, to uh, produce eubiosis, but it's a specifically bacteria that is being made or produced or found uh, to, to your needs, you know, to the customer needs. So we are doing that. It, it, it's very, very, very interesting. And we are taking and collecting many, many good results on that. And that it's service not, is called Probiotic Choice? Is that what the, your service is called? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And this is very new. This is very new. So uh, I can produce a probiotic with 10 strains. And for example, for the, the, for, uh, the neighbor, he has a, a different issue. I can produce one with three or four strains that more specific to them. So they are they are uh, working with different bacteria, good bacteria that it's really focused on their problem. So the segue, Ronaldo, for you would be very I, I nice. Know we've talked about you, your plans and intent to you know launch a, a line of pro probiotics uh, under your umbrella of, of product lines. And, and I, I, I think that one of those uh, offerings will be something customized or, or personalized. You know, so the question would be, you know, when you are formulating, because you're, you are very much hands on in the formulation and the development of your products, correct? So what's the process that you use to develop or, you know, or formulate a line of customized or personalized probiotics for humans? You know, what's the, what, what is, what's your, when you're thinking about, when, you know, if you're, when you're thinking about developing a product, a probiotic offering that's personalized, you know, what's the thought process that you go through? Well, for, first step is, is to, uh, I think there's an obstacle. It's called Anvisa. Yeah. Because <laughs> Anvisa, yeah. So Anvisa does not allow us to uh, manipulate more than, I think, three different uh, probiotics uh, at this time as supplement mm -hmm. you know there's a new there's a new list that I was uh, looking at before we started uh, this um, this live conversation uh, actually we've been researching about uh, probiotics uh, for at least uh, six seven years uh, ago we started doing these uh researches but the point is the legislation the legislation is the is the primary uh obstacle that you have to to customize a uh, mm -hmm. very nice formula uh, let's say like a 10 probiotics for example you know and i think uh there there is only three let me see this uh, this chart here. Well, this chart is just about uh, structure function claims by country and what the regulations allow. So we know that Brazil, you don't, you're not allowed to make uh, to make claims, right? Generic claims on your or structure function. Yeah, claims your... for the for the three uh, bacteria that they allow, it, you can do it. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's um, acidophilus. And there are two more. Enterococcus, uh, maybe? No. Enterococcus, I don't know. It's uh, the, the haminosis. Uh -huh. Lactobacillus haminosis. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. okay. Lactobacillus haminosis. And there's another one. But uh, they've been uh, releasing uh, new... Uh, New parts, new parts of the the legislation every year, just uh, permitting one or two more. Yeah, when the when the list came uh, came out, 
there were only two. Now mm -hmm. there are three. <laughs> you know, I think three. I think I I, I might I, I might be wrong. You know, uh, uh, I still have to check this uh, deeper. So they pre-approved uh, the claims you can say about the 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 the, the three approved strains, but outside of that, you can't make structural function claims on on the, on that formulation. No, outside that, we, you cannot uh, neither uh, uh, manipulate other. Uh, there's there's not much to speak about when you go to supplements, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, it's it's very strict the legislation in this field. They have released uh, high high uh, dosage of uh, vitamins, but uh, probiotics is something quite new, you know, for them. And they, you know, they they are very slow in this area. And then uh, the community, the industries must. Uh, have meetings with them, show them that they 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 sh uh, they should go further in this uh, in this uh, uh, field and release other bacteria. You know, it's a political work until they release everything. I think, right, uh, Fernando? Do you use um, you know gut microbiome testing or you know? gut biome testing or you know stool tests to try to identify you know or isolate uh micro microbial dna yeah that's one of the the, the works we do uh, related with universities you know so it's a, a funnel that i say to develop new products and find new bacteria for new species as well so it's one of the the the, the jobs that we that we work as well but one thing that i have to say it's I, I, one of the it's a little bit tricky to de develop probiotics uh, it's the ministry of uh, here, in my side of agriculture agriculture uh, because they they are very strict uh, strict to this kind of to some bacteria and it is very difficult for you to have uh, new new authorization to sell so that's one of the points that take takes time and and, and uh, it's difficult to develop the probiotic market as well mm -hmm. I, I have to agree is the same uh, is the same Fernando for animals yeah we have has the same we, yeah we don't need a visa but we need a mapa the ministry of agriculture Mapa. yeah and that's uh -huh. you you can sweat a little bit to have the registration <laughs> <laughs> i mean one strategy one strategy that that uh i think is employed is to put the probiotic in formulations uh of conventional foods for example that have other actives that you can talk about right that so that maybe you can um uh, be very forward with the other actives in the product and, and not, and, but you, but somehow, you know, get the point across that you have a probiotic in there as well. Is that something, uh, Fernando, for example, that you can do and try to get around the regulatory restrictions by you know, using products that have a number of different actives? Yeah, but we have much to, to restrict what MAPA said. We cannot, you know, made some, made uh, because. You, you have a regulatory demand so you have to you know stick to the to the rule so you have to follow the the rules yeah uh. right you know but if I have some other natural ingredients for example that have some of beneficial effect on immunity and I also have a probiotic in my product that that has immunity as a beneficial end um, is that a way to finesse it yeah, actually, you can uh, find some ways, uh, the, uh, but not claim as a probiotic, you know. You mm -hmm. cannot claim as a probiotic because the, you're not allowed to do that. But uh, if you if you take in Latin America marketing, of course, you have some, some products and companies, you know, working in a different way, putting, for example, some 
different kinds of natural feed additives together and and searching on the legislation how they can work uh, to develop the business. That's that's right. Okay. So Ronaldo, are you looking to have a standalone uh, probiotic line? Or are you looking to add probiotics to one of your existing uh, powdered products? Uh, we are going to launch uh, this year uh, what we have uh, on hands, uh, allowed by the Anvisa. So very simple formula and uh that's all we, we we cannot go further but uh we've been analyzing like a baby food and it seems that baby food you can add uh you can add uh, uh probiotics you can mix with nutrients because uh the 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 current legislation you cannot mix probiotics in supplements that's what i know you can only you can only sell itself you know the 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 bacteria itself the strain you can mix the strains but you cannot mix the strains with uh, protein for example at the okay. food supplements you know okay. at food yeah. supplements uh legislation uh you know the last, have, the last question oh, go ahead i'm sorry Go ahead. No, go ahead. I finished. No, no. As we as we come close down to the hour, I promised that I wouldn't hold you more than an hour. But mm -hmm. you know, the the scientific substantiation for the claims that you do make is is important. You know, so the extent that you have science backing the formulation, the probiotic formulations that you intend to use, um, is something that uh, you have to be on top of. Um, so uh, you know, this chart compares across regions and is showing us that scientific standards for the substantiation of claims may vary according to the claim category, right? So that's pretty much across the world, you can do that. You know, there is a guidance for the substantiation of claims. So this one was interesting to me. I mean, if there, you know, there's, there is guidance in the U.S. for, for what constitutes, um, you know, competent and reliable scientific evidence of, of, of claims, right? So what in, in Brazil, you know, what is the guidance? How do you determine whether you have a proper and adequate substantiation for, you know, a probiotic or any other claim that you want to make on your product? You following the question? So you, you have yes. a product, and let's say, you know, let's say, let, let's say it's the generic three, four uh, strains that you can use that Anvisa approves. What's the substantiation? Do you, I guess that's like a monogram. You don't uh, monograph. You don't actually need substantiation for those, uh, no. that formulation. We, we don't need to, you're asking if, it, if it, you need to show up some uh, research about it. Is exactly. It, is that? Yes. No, we don't, we don't need it. We don't need it because uh, they are released. Those, those strains, once released, Anvisa has uh, research about it. So they, mm -hmm. they have everything uh, on back. So you don't, you don't need to, to show, you just need to, you just need to communicate um, the, the production start at, uh, at, uh, through the internet, at the website of Anvisa. You have to to kind of do a kind of a registration that you are manufacturing those uh, capsules. Let's say that okay. not the strains because we do, we do not manufacture the strains, but you you are going to manufacture that product with that strains. You know, so right. basically, it's is that we don't need with uh, Mapa. It's the same thing for uh, for animal products or no. It uh, depends on the bacteria. You have to have studies on that, uh, showing that your probiotic can uh, can use to improve performance. You know, so in general, uh, if you have a probiotic, uh, you cannot uh, you 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 will use or will promote uh, pro products or bacteria that promote performance. You know, 
Uh, sometimes you have you have to to make studies on that, but but depends of on the the bacteria. You know they 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 uh, you are allowed to 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 register a product because uh, it's already listed in Mapa. So in, in Mapa. Okay. Well, yeah, Fernando, we'll, we'll go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, please. No, no. I was just was going to comment about the, what Fernando said. Once it's listed, it's it's okay. You can go ahead and do it. Okay. Okay. Well, Ronaldo Cheezer from Performance Science Nutrition and Fernando Araujo. Am I getting your your last name right, uh, Fernando? Uh, from uh, Synergies Agro Negocios Limited. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, and I hope we have an opportunity in the future to speak again, and we'll be following you from Panama. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Oh, thank, and, you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.